Here you can see that I've given you an 8 by 12 works piece. If you need a bigger size, that's fine. You can go over the edges and we'll deal with it later. But if you're making a regular size paddle, you should fit it inside here. These four circles on the outside corners represent screws that will hold it down to the machine. You have to make sure your paddle doesn't go through one of those screws. If it does, you can damage the machine. Now it's time to start actually drawing our ping pong paddle. Uh, what size should we make it? Well, here's where we go back to our sketch. Let me take a look at our sketch. The sketch I made here is fairly complicated, so although I'm going to look at it now, I'm actually going to draw something slightly different. What I can get from this, though, is I want a four inch handle, inch and a half wide, seven inches by seven inches. All right, so I had a seven inch circle. And I'm going to have to put a number in there, seven. So that's a seven inch diameter. And I'm going to dimension the distance to the edge. I'll make it exactly half of the overall width. That way, that will be centered. I'm going to put in my handle. I wanted it to be sticking down about four inches. And I wanted it to be 1.5 inches long. If I made it four by 1.5, that actually wouldn't work. The reason being that now, if I wanted to move it, having it stick down four inches, it wouldn't really attach. I want it to overlap. So I'm actually going to have to change this dimension, have it overlap maybe an inch and a half, so make it 5.5. Now I'm going to dimension the distance. The handle sticks down to be four. Hmm, it's just barely gonna. Yes, I don't really like this, I guess. Plus, it's right up against the edge. It's not much space. I think this might be better at three and a half. And this might be better at maybe four. Too small. Four point two five. Four point five. I guess so. I want to make sure this handle is in the middle of the blade and not offset. I'm going to do that with a dimension here. Do a little math. I realize that's 3.25 in my case. Yours might be different. Make sure this handle is the right size for your hand. Make sure this handle overlaps the blade a little bit for strength. Make sure you like the overall shape. Now you've used your drawing tools and your dimensioning to make a some sort of blade shape and some sort of handle shape that overlap for strength. We've also made sure using dimensions that they are in the center of my workpiece and that they're both lined up with each other correctly. Maybe you chose something more um, unusual, interesting. Um, maybe you choose something very simple. The next step is going to be to add two little location holes here and here, or here and here for that matter. And we are going to put in two circles. All right, one circle, and it has to have a diameter of 0.25 inches. And another circle. It doesn't matter exactly where they are, but they should be somewhere near the top and somewhere near the bottom. These two circles are going to be used for little pegs that will hold the handle together after it's manufactured. These holes will look a lot better if I dimension how far they are from the edge so that they're even. So if that's 0.75, then that will be right in the middle. And dimension the distance down to be 1.5. And this guy here, I'll dimension the distance there to be five. So now that we've dimensioned where those holes are, and depending on what your design is, it may require less or more dimensions. Um, in either case, the next step is to copy over the handle so that you have the two pieces that will stick on either side of the handle to make it thicker. We'll do that 
making sure we are not selected on anything, dragging a box around the handle, copying, control C, also the right click, copy, and then paste, sketch entities. That's the right click. You could also use a control C, control V. Um, now I'm going to move it so that it's not overlapping either my handle or my blade or this machining hole over in the corner. And I'm going to paste another, and I click a left click to put it in. Oh, sorry, hit return. And left click to put it in. I'm going to paste another one here. And again, I'll use these arrows to drag it into the place it needs to be. So it's not going to um, interfere with either those machining holes or my ping pong paddle that I've already designed. And then I have to accept that, pressing enter and left click. It looks like a mess because of all these dimensions, but if I accept the sketch at this point, it actually looks pretty good. All right, now it's time to get rid of some extra lines and add some fillets, so I will double click on sketch one to edit it, and then I will use my scissor tool to cut out some of these extra lines here. Now I'm gonna use the fillet tool to round over that corner. I don't want a radius of 0.25, I want a radius of, say, 1. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks more like a ping pong paddle. Yeah, there we go. I like that. I might want to round over the corners of the handle, too, but that would probably require a smaller radius. So now I'll change that back to radius of... One. Oh, that's not good. I'll do that. Let me try that again. Put in a radius here of one. Left click to accept. Now I'm going to try putting in a radius down here. Putting in a radius down here. Instead of a radius of one, I'm going to make it 0.25. Yeah, that's the kind of round I want. So I'll put another one here. And another one here, and another one here. I like radiuses. They look clean. And again, if I accept my sketch, you can see where I'm at. Ah, it looks more like a ping pong paddle. Though it doesn't look like I got all my radiuses. So I'm gonna have to go in there and fix that. Probably didn't accept them all. So there, there, there. There, there. All right, hit point two five. Looks like I got them all that time. Missed one. Get that one in there. Left click to put it in. Accept point two five. Now I'll accept the sketch and see what it looks like. That's kind of what I was thinking. Now it's going to be time to extrude this paddle, whether it's a simple paddle or a more complicated paddle. You've got to choose to extrude. Now we've got to choose the regions we want to extrude. So I'm going to do my two paddle handle pieces, my paddle itself. Now I usually like to look at the corner of it, kind of from an angle, just so I can see what's happening with the extrude. They're different colors because they're coming in as different pieces, and that's a good thing. The depth that we want to go to is 0.22, because that is the thickness of the wood we are using. Now we are going to assemble this paddle. So we'll go to our assembly, and choose to insert part one, part two, and part three. And we'll choose the checkbox to insert them. Now is the hard part. We gotta actually put them all together. We'll be using the fastened mate. Click on the fastened mate. 
you know, get to the center of this hole. You'll fasten it. You notice that little blue arrow is pointing up. You come to this hole, the center of that hole. You can fasten it there, and they will stick together. Now, they're in the same place, so we have to change the direction. No, you have to change the direction. Honestly, you just play around with this till you got the right thing. It's stuck right to the face. Perfect. We choose the green, and we solve. All right, so that looks imperfect. I did something wrong. Those holes are lined up. All right. But the edge of the paddle is not. Which means I have some error in dimensioning somewhere. Time to go back and fix that. Easy enough to do. Close that fastened. Go back to my paddle. Go back to my sketch one. Try and figure it out. Looks like I didn't dimension how far it is to the edge. So I'm going to put dimension here. And that should be 0.75. And I'm going to put a dimension here. That should be also 0.75. I already had a dimension there. Yep, I already have a dimension there. If I had done this earlier, I wouldn't have to do this step, which is to dimension that to be 0.75. And this as well. And this as well. And that as well. Once I accept that, I'll go back to my assembly, and now it worked out perfectly. So by fixing it in my original part, it fixed the assembly, which was incorrect. Last step, I'm going to fasten this on here. Again, I'm going to use the fastened mate. Zoom in so I can get that little blue line going vertically in the middle. And I will zoom in here to get that little blue line going vertically in the middle. Again, same problem. They stuck together. Change the direction. Spin it around a couple of times till it works out. That is perfect. I can solve that. And the last step is that this edge here seems very sharp to me. So what I would like to do is either round it or chamfer it. Unfortunately, we don't have the tool to round it once we actually make it, so a chamfer will be a lot easier. What I'm going to do here is just figure out what that part is. Double click on it. Double click on it. And it'll give us the option to edit the part. So now I'll click on chamfer. I'm going to chamfer this edge right here. 0.2 actually looks like a pretty good size, but if I wanted, I could change that to something else. 0.15, for example. See what that looks like? Yeah, that's probably fine. So I'll choose that chamfer, and I'll choose OK. And then we can go to our assembly. Now that chamfer is all in. Next thing over here, we're going to chamfer and chamfer this piece. So click on that to select it, so I know it's part two. So that is right there. I want to chamfer that edge. So I will go to chamfer that edge. I'm going to do 0.15 now. Like that. That looks good. Go back to the assembly. And now each side of this blade handle has been changed.